I'm going to talk about the Soft TW tourniquet. This is an arterial tourniquet that was designed originally for battlefield application, but it has its use in any major limb compressible hemorrhage where we're struggling to gain control of the bleeding. There are a number of cautions that we should consider when using any tourniquet, and we should consider where it fits into our standard operating procedures. In many cases, major wounds can be controlled perfectly well by the effective application of direct pressure. In most instances, we should attempt some of these things first before using a tourniquet. If the patient appears to have a catastrophic compressible hemorrhage from a limb, then a tourniquet can be applied very quickly and control bleeding very quickly and may well save that person's life. There are a number of tourniquets that are commercially available. The Soft TW is favoured because of its robust construction being made with a metal bar and with a metal buckle and because we know it works. The elastic bands are removed and the tourniquet is opened out and placed over the limb. Aiming to get it within about five, perhaps ten centimetres of the wound edge, or in particular of the point that I think is bleeding most heavily. Having got it in place, I'm going to take up any excess material through the metal buckle, so it's reasonably firm. I'm then going to pick up the metal bar, just to take any further slack up from the system and avoid pinching, and then wind it up nice and tight until we have control of the bleeding. Having done that, I'm just going to put the metal bar through the plastic retaining loop and that will hold it securely in place. And you can see this tourniquet is nice and firmly applied and that is very robust and is very unlikely to be knocked out. I'm now reassessing the patient, confirming that they're not bleeding. And importantly, I'm going to document that I have applied a tourniquet to this limb and I'll record the time of application. Documenting the application time of tourniquets can be done on a patient report form and can be done, particularly in a major incident with multiple casualties, simply by writing on the patient. In some military systems, the letter T for tourniquet is written on the patient's forehead along with the time of application. And the reason for this is, of course, when we hand over the patient, it is crucial to hand over that an arterial tourniquet is in place and at what time it was applied. The application of tourniquet is in itself uncomfortable and over time the ischemia beyond the tourniquet, which is inevitable, uh, will also lead to further pain. So analgesia is very important. On the Soft DW tourniquet there is a small patch onto which you can write the time. However, in practice, in a field environment, these can sometimes unpeel and so they shouldn't be relied upon for documenting at the time of application. It's much better to make it very obvious either on the patient or on the patient report form or if the material is orange it can also be written on with a permanent marker pen. Sometimes these tourniquets will be in service made in black materials and of course you're not going to be able to write onto black webbing. The Soft TW has a rubberized piece on the back of the tourniquet and this is to hold it in the right place when you apply it, these two rubber strips. The tourniquet has a metal buckle that has been designed very specifically so that we are unlikely to accidentally undo it. If we pull from different angles it will remain intact and the way to undo it if we want to undo it is to push the two metal components towards each other and then it will open quite easily. This is particularly useful if someone has their limb trapped for example in a piece of machinery so that we can put the tourniquet around the limb without having to try and put it over the end of the limb. So we place the tourniquet around the limb, pull until we get a positive metal click and that is the buckle now secure. The Soft TW tourniquet comes with a aluminium metal bar and this has been designed to reduce the likelihood of it snapping when a lot of pressure goes through the system. The plastic loop to retain the metal bar doesn't have to have a lot of force going through it so it doesn't need to be metal. So whilst the metal buckle takes a lot of strain and needs to be strong the metal bar has a lot of force going through it and must be strong. The plastic buckle is perfectly strong enough to hold 
the rotary force that's going into the side of it and is uh, therefore very unlikely to fail. When applying any arterial tourniquet to a patient at the thigh level, particularly in large adult males, you may find that you need to apply two tourniquets adjacent to each other within two to three centimeters. So between the two tourniquets, you can affect pressure deep enough to actually occlude any arteries and stop the bleeding. Once an arterial tourniquet has been applied, if someone has a large open wound with a fracture, of course, don't be surprised to see some bleeding continuing from the interosseous space within from the bone medulla as the bone marrow is vascular and will continue to ooze blood usually at quite a slow rate but that's going to be unaffected by a tourniquet place around the bone because the bone won't compress. If the end of a bone continues to ooze blood then it should be simply dressed and usually the rate of bleeding is so slow that a, a simple dressing over the end of the wound will be enough to control that hemorrhage.